Hey Google. How can I help? Let's start the Google for Startups Accelerator Voice AI Cohort Demo Day presentation. Okay, good luck to all the participating startups. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Google for Startups Accelerator Voice AI Virtual Demo Day. My name is Jason Scott, and I head up Google's startup developer ecosystem here in the United States. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Francisco, and I lead Google's startup developer ecosystem efforts in Canada. And back in December of 2020, we announced a new Google for Startups Accelerator focused on startups leveraging voice user interfaces, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to take on challenges consumers and businesses face every day. It is no surprise that COVID-19 has accelerated the adoption of smart voice enabled devices with users leveraging their voices more than ever to help manage tasks across the home, particularly as our homes have doubled as offices, schools, gyms, and even our family vacation spots. The inaugural cohort of the Google for Startups Accelerator Voice AI brought together a diverse set of startups and founders from across the US and Canada. Collectively, these 12 selected companies are leveraging voice technology to solve complex challenges across accessibility, education, and care. And after 10 weeks, we've reached the end of an amazing program. Alongside over 150 Google mentors, our founders have tackled projects focused on product, design and UX, technical infrastructure, data, machine learning, growth, sales, as well as people and leadership. And as you can imagine, we've kept them all quite busy. In a moment, we'll hear from each of our 12 founders and they all share with you more about their impactful companies and their teams. So let's get started. As a reminder, each founder will be given about five minutes to present their companies. We will then have time for one question per company. And of course, our teams will be available in chat, so get your questions ready. First up, it is my pleasure to introduce Mario, the founder and CEO of Babbly, coming to us all the way from Toronto. She will tell us more about how Babbly provides parents with real-time insights on their baby's speech and language skills, and recommends personalized activities that promote their child's development. 80% of the brain is developed in the first three years of life. And yet for most parents, they struggle to understand if their baby is progressing at the right pace. Hi, I'm Miriam, co-founder and CEO of Babbly. At Babbly, we're building the world's largest data platform to track and support development in the first thousand days of life. Millennials make up over 80% of births every year, and they're far more data-driven in their parenting than any other generation. They use smart baby monitors and wearables to track their child's physical health and sleep. But when it comes to their baby's brain development, they're left with paper checklists that haven't changed since the 1960s. This leaves them wondering how their child is developing relative to their peers, and in many cases, results in early red flags being overlooked and undiagnosed. We're going to change that, and we're starting with speech and language, which impacts one in 10 children worldwide. At Babbly, we're using the baby's voice as a proxy for brain development and give parents actionable data to promote their child's positive growth. Here's how we do it. Through an AI-powered platform, parents can upload a video of their child and get an instant analysis of their language skills. Using machine learning, we analyze a child's utterance when compared with known benchmarks. We then provide parents with personalized recommendations that help them promote their child's communication, literacy, and social skills. For parents that want more, Babbly connects them to a pool of coaches who can support them virtually through personalized plans. Now, you might be asking, how is this going to work with so many different languages and dialects? Here's a fun fact. 
all babies go through the exact same stages and patterns of language development, regardless of their mother tongue. This means our AI scales across languages much faster than other uh, technologies. Babbly is developed by a strong team of technology and product executives. Carla is a former Amazon Alexa engineer who spent her entire career on voice technology as a machine learning scientist. Shane is a roboticist with deep experience in AI and healthcare, and Andrew is a former Amazon Alexa developer. Finally, I come from a product background where I spent companies like Samsung and NASA to create human-centered products and experiences. Baby development is a massive market. With devices in the nursery and services in the pediatric space, we believe our global addressable market is over $8 billion. Our business model is a hybrid of B2B and consumer, direct to consumer. We make money by licensing our AI into devices such as baby monitors, smart cameras, and speakers, and also by charging a referral fee for virtual consultations that, that are booked on our platform. Since launching our platform, we have helped thousands of parents get a better understanding of their child's development. What's really amazing is those who work with our coaches reported an improvement in their child's language and social uh, skills within four weeks. We are proud to work with some of the world's top pediatricians, speech scientists, and technology executives to ensure our, our platform is grounded in science and scales with privacy and security in mind. It's time to change how we track a child's development and at Babbly, we are on a mission to become parents' source of truth for the right information at the right time. So if you wanna help us empower parents along their journey, we would love to hear from you. Thank you. Thanks, Miriam. A question from the audience. What measures are you taking to ensure both privacy and accuracy? Yeah, great question. Um, we know a baby's data is very sensitive and we wanna make sure that um, parents can trust us uh, with that data. With that in mind, um, we have built our platform using world's most secure technologies and we follow best practices when it comes to data security. Um, every uh, data from every child is uh, anonymized and we do not share any data with third parties. Um, in terms of accuracy, um, our AI's accuracy is much greater than uh, parent self-reporting, which is what's happening today. And parent self-reporting is accurate about 55% of the time. So we know we are performing it way better than that. Um, but our goal is really to minimize um, false negatives without overdoing referrals to healthcare professionals, because uh, we also don't want to make parents worried for no reason. Um, the team is also working very closely with clinicians from the University of Toronto on uh, a two-year clinical validation study um, that we are very excited about because not only it helps us improve um, the AI's uh, performance over time, um, but um, the research outcome will be published uh, soon. Thank you, Miriam and the Babbly team. Up next, we'll hear from Bespoken, based in Seattle. Bespoken is a leader in automated testing, training, and monitoring for voice applications and devices. And according to John and his team, if you can talk to it, Bespoken can test it. Off to John to tell you more. Hi, I'm John Kelvey, uh, CEO and co-founder of Bespoken, and I'm really excited to be part of this demo day. Uh, working with the Google team has been a fantastic experience for us. Uh, we're exci excited to tell you about our company, uh, the progress we've made, and why testing, training, and monitoring is essential to voice and conversational AI. Uh, but first, why should you care about this technology at all? Uh, well, as many of you are already aware, uh, conversational AI is poised to be a transformative technology. We see it in the car, uh, and on the go in mobile apps and smart speakers, uh, in TVs and AirPods, in the kitchen, the living room, the office, and the call center. Uh, voice is everywhere because it's the most natural way to communicate. Here's one specific recent example of that transformation. 
uh, the Erica Assistant from Bank of America. This was released in 2019 and has grown uh, rapidly in popularity since then. This assistant and ones like it are cropping up everywhere across a myriad of industries, use cases, and modalities. The overall result is that natural language understanding is on course to become the dominant new UI paradigm. But there is a snag, uh, a quick thought experiment for you in the audience. We see on this page famed scientist Marie Curie and famed singer Mariah Carey. What do you think they have in common? Uh, your first thought may be not much. Uh, these are two people not normally associated with one another. But because their names sound similar to a voice assistant, they can be easily mistaken for one another. This may seem like a silly example, but there are legions of similar cases. Taken together, they become a major problem and frustration for users. When we look at the combination of accents, languages, environments, and platforms on which people are building voice experiences, the complexity explodes. For even fairly simple models with a few hundred phrases, there can be thousands of unique test scenarios requiring hundreds of hours of testing. Doing this sort of work manually is simply impossible. But it is critical work. We know that improving understanding improves the user experience and improves customer satisfaction. We know this based on countless anecdotes as well as hard data. And I know it especially well from my own experience building world-class speech recognition systems for the likes of Spotify and NPR. Uh, it is this need that was the genesis for Bespoken. Uh, we provide the tools to improve understanding through exacting measurement and optimization. Our solution spans the entire conversational AI lifecycle. We help customers gather input data based on what real users say, which in turn is used to comprehensively and automatically test the system. Based on the testing results, we provide guidance on how to train and improve the model. Once the model improvements are made, we monitor it continuously to ensure it continues to work well. When we see issues, we go back to the start, gathering data and feeding it into another cycle of measurement and improvement. When we begin our work, we typically see significant improvements very quickly, 10 or 20% increases in accuracy, reductions in errors of 50% or more. The overall problem is complex, but the solution is deceptively simple and does not require a PhD. The core of our product is a unified API and testing platform for interacting with a wide variety of conversational AI platforms that are out there. Tests are written in plain English and precisely imitate in an automated way real people talking to your system. We provide easy to use tools that everyone from interns to DevOps professionals use on a daily basis. We like to say that if you can talk to it, we can test it. Thanks to the breadth, depth, and maturity of our product, we've gained numerous customers across a wide array of industries. We're rapidly adding subscribers, building our revenue base and sales channels, uh, and expanding our footprint in the marketplace and in new industries such as healthcare and financial services. And we have a great leadership team. My co-founder, Frank Raines, is the former CEO of Fannie Mae, a Fortune 10 company during his tenure, and an active executive and investor in voice. This is the second company we founded together, and our partnership uh, dates back to 2012. We've progressed rapidly during this accelerator, strengthening our partnership with Google and the Dialogue Pro team, adding tools to make it faster and easier for customers to get started with us, and adding new channels such as the AWS and Google marketplaces to put our sales on steroids. Leveraging this momentum, we are planning to raise a Series A later this year to accelerate our sales and marketing, as well as complete our product portfolio. So our ask, we're eager to talk to investors and fill out participation in this next round of funding. Please reach out if this is of interest. And thank you all for your time and attention. Thanks so much, John. And now a question for you. What are the most significant blockers for growing your customer base and how do you plan to address them? That's a great question. So traditionally, uh, I would say the biggest blocker for us has been uh, not enough sales and marketing. Uh, what we're doing to counteract that is we've really uh, invested heavily in working with sales channels, 
uh, sales and marketing channels uh, such as Google Dialogflow, Genesis, the AWS Marketplace. Uh, these are folks that have direct and extensive contact with the customer base that we're pursuing. Uh, so we plan to ride in their wake and gain customers really without having to scale our sales and marketing team in kind. Uh, so we think that's a great approach to that. Uh, additionally, some customers struggle to get started. Uh, so we've added tools that make it really easy for them to create test cases. Uh, through our partnership with Google and others, uh, we've been able to uh, automatically generate test cases with the click of a button. Uh, this helps our customers get off to a fast start and really get on the path uh, to building higher quality voice experiences. And another fantastic job and congratulations to John and Bespoken. Up next, I'm thrilled to introduce you to Lexi from Conversation Health, another Toronto-based startup that enables conversational agents for patients and healthcare professionals in clinical trials, medical affairs, and commercial lines of business. Hi, I'm Lexi Kaplan, co-founder and chief product officer of Conversation Health the conversational AI platform of the life sciences industry. Thank you for joining me today. Did you know that before the hit of COVID-19, there were already a billion health-related searches on Google every single day? The demand for health information has exploded in 2020 as people now more than ever are searching for information on COVID, chronic conditions, and their treatments. We've seen this accelerate the challenge health companies have been facing for years. You see, under normal circumstances, we were limited to about 20 million patient appointments with health professionals per day. Now, with the reduction of face-to-face -face interactions, the pandemic has made the supply of professional support even more limited, pushing patients to leverage Google and other self-service tools when they leave the doctor's office, and then often ending up with dangerous misinformation. At the same time, life science sales reps, who are a key source of clinical information, are now benched. This is at a time when physicians have more questions than ever about treatment options with the rate of medical information doubling every six months. Whether it's coming from a patient, nurse, pharmacist, or physician, we expect health companies like any other to be available on demand. Today, treatment journeys are primarily driven by human interactions, which unfortunately aren't always available. For example, we've seen 40% of the time that pharma companies are reached out to digitally is outside of office hours when a human isn't there. Conversational AI allows us to scale these human interactions and be available 24-7, 365. And this is a huge opportunity. Life science companies alone already spend $200 billion a year in sales and marketing every year, trying to engage healthcare professionals, patients, and consumers. There's no doubt that conversational AI will capture a large slice of that pie, especially as customers now want and expect fast, always-on, personalized, and human-like experiences that AI can provide. With the growth of social messaging and voice devices like Google Home and Alexa, health companies can now better engage and support patients and health professionals whenever, wherever they need. As a physician, my co-founder, Dr. John Reeves, recognized the power of being able to impact health outcomes through a conversation at the right moment. But when we tried to build our own health bot four years ago, we found there were no tools available that could both support the nuanced healthcare language nor the vast regulatory requirements needed to build any digital tool in this industry. While collaborating with life science companies, pharma, biotech, and medical associations, we found they too were eager to create these tools, but were completely blocked for the same reasons. That's where Conversation Health came in. We've created the platform that enables these health companies to create conversational AI agents. You see, when building an AI agent in healthcare, there are really two key challenges that you can't ignore, which end up being a non-starter for many teams. First, when a wrong answer can impact health outcomes or have severe regulatory consequences, it's critical to understand healthcare nuance, disease, and product questions. As you'll see in this example about a migraine product, a few simple questions about headaches can have vastly different meanings. Is this for headaches? Will it give me a headache? Or this website is so hard to navigate, it's giving me a headache. This challenge becomes even more important in voice where understanding of molecule names and medical jargon fails miserably. Non-healthcare NLU engines or worse keywords have no chance of picking up on this nuance. That's why we've created proprietary machine learning models and have collected over hundred million training data points across major therapeutic areas in order to understand every possible question about a disease or product and have created a platform to stand these models up for voice and text agents quickly, reliably, and most importantly, accurately. 
For those of you who don't work in this industry, the second key challenge is that it's like no other, which has caused the need for highly verticalized software platforms used by health brands, giants like Salesforce Health Cloud, Viva, and IQVIA, and more. This is why from the ability to create and approve responses across lines of business to sensitive data handling, medical legal regulatory requirements, key integrations into health tech stacks, and the ability to scale globally, every module, feature, capability of the platform has been designed to meet the unique needs of healthcare. Our business model is simple. This is an enterprise SaaS platform and our team of experts are available to hold your hand every step of the way. Over the past year, we've been working on opening the platform and currently have a number of clients and partners leveraging the self-service capabilities. We have an amazing team of experienced entrepreneurs with diverse industry skill sets, with now more than 80 individuals on the Conversation Health team, comprised of physicians, pharmacists, and life science industry experts, working hand-in-hand -hand with technologists, data scientists, NLU engineers, and developers to bring best-in-class conversational AI solutions to patients and healthcare professionals. We've gained a ton of traction in the past few years, now working with 20 global life science companies, including most of the top 10 pharmas, with over 100 applications of AI globally. We're now working with three continents in North America, Europe, Asia Pacific, with plans to expand regions further this year, with growing applications across therapeutic areas from vaccines to oncology and consumer health, our platform becomes smarter every day. If you're interested in joining the roller coaster or would like to find out more about working with Conversation Health, please reach out. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lexi. And now for our audience, uh, they would love to know a little bit more about your strategy for international expansion. As a company headquartered in Canada, with the majority of our early clients in the US and any local deployments requiring both French and English support, we need to design for global expansion from day one. From both a technology and resourcing perspective, we've taken a really global approach to building conversation health. That's included building tools in our platform that handle the different regulatory requirements of each region and capabilities to facilitate global to local adaptation of our clients' AI agents, as well as our team's footprint physically expanding across the world. We appointed a general manager of Europe last year, and one of our latest developments has actually been a lead for Japan and Asia Pacific markets. It's been remarkable to see the global mindsets of our clients have taken, and I have no doubt that this will drive us to continue the expansion to these markets and new. Such awesome work to Lexi and the team. Up next, we have Needle, like the haystack, from Santa Monica, California. Needle is democratizing access to the microphone by giving everyone their own live call-in radio station that trans transcribes, amplifies, and monetizes the audio creator's words as they speak. In 1996, broadcast radio was deregulated and big corporations began monopolizing airwaves. For the first time nationally, radio no longer answered directly to its listeners, it answered to the stock market. This drove out variety, live shows, innovation, and drove down employee headcounts. The emergence of streaming music and the growth of podcasting followed as proxies for gaining access to both DJ booth and the microphone. So in 2017, we created Needle, as in the haystack, to democratize access to information and the microphone itself in the $44.1 billion global radio market by giving everybody their own live call-in radio show that transcribes, amplifies, and monetizes their words as they speak. But at scale, with thousands of conversations happening at once, how can users find the live audio content that they want without us limiting the fire hose of discovery through our granted and issued US patent for real-time text-based search of live audio streams? We are the only company in the world who can do real-time discovery, real-time moderation, and ad-based monetization for live speech. And we've caught the eye of both Kevin Mayer and Peter Norvig, who are now advising us. Now, we know, however, that radio is only as good as the host. So we've already signed up great radio hosts like Fat Joe. And we're going to be signing up a whole bunch more just like him ahead of our national launch. You want to see this in action? Let's do it. We're going to promote Neil, our technologist today, to radio hosts. Users opening the app are invited to go on air and choose a category to get started. 
Once the voice is on air, their words are transcribed in real time to make them searchable. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Arts and Entertainment with your host, Neil Goldstein. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the behind the scenes business of how this industry rolls. People can join the audience to listen, comment, and even tip pay. Pay is currency on our platform that listeners purchase to tip voices. For every one hay received, it's $1 they can cash out. 1,000 hay equals $1,000. Looks like I just got tipped some hay by Allende, our listener, who uh, is joining us now. It looks like he's dialing in. Let me see if I can bring him onto the floor, onto the into the studio, actually. Hey, Neil, first time caller, long time listener. Thanks for having me on your show. Well, thank you, Allende, for joining me. I appreciate it. Appreciate the tip. Glad that I've got some viewership today. Neil gets a custom web page upon sign up. When he shares his live broadcast, listeners can tap the link to listen even without the app. If he's not on air, his followers can tap to input their number for automatic text alerts. When it goes on air, that's right, even without downloading the app. We're raising $3.25 million to go from iOS and Android beta to a global launch. We've just opened a new round of financing. In addition to the traditional institutional investors, we've set aside $1 million for Reg CF on Start Engine. The fastest way to our campaign link is to go right to our website, needle.com. Join us as we move the needle by democratizing access to information and the microphone itself. Thank you, Allende. Question from the audience, which I'm sure you get often. Are you in direct competition with Clubhouse? Not only are we not in direct competition with Clubhouse, but their success has actually paved the way for our success. They've made it really obvious what our value proposition is. Moderation, discovery, control, reaching people off, off the app and, and monetization. Moderation at scale is critical for a platform like this. We do that inherently in our DNA with our, with our IP. And then discovery is the same thing. Control, because we've taken the approach of radio, a, a live radio uh, talk show, uh, call-in show, gives 100% control to the host. And then, of course, reaching people off the app um, that, that don't have the app, and then monetization from the beginning uh, through Hey. So we're really excited that, that they paved the way for us, and we, we, we look forward to uh, picking up where they've left off. Thanks again, Dave. Next, I'm happy to introduce Nico from Oto to tell us more about his New York-based startup building an acoustic engine capable of delivering non-semantic insights, intonation, emotions, laughter from voice streams in real time on a small compute footprint. Hi everyone, my name is Nico. I'm an engineer and AI researcher and now a co-founder of Otto, a spin-off company of the Speech Lab at SRI International, the team that created, for example, Nuance Communications or Siri. Our mission is to bring empathy to online conversation for safer and happier digital communities. You all know it, right? Social interactions are increasingly digital, yet online communities suffer from rampant toxic content and behavior. This toxicity affects the well being and ultimately the psychological safety of every connected human. We want to change that, starting with online games. Did you know that gaming as an industry is already bigger than cinema and sports combined? And it keeps growing. There are now 3 billion gamers around the world. But 65% of people playing online games have been a victim of harassment in voice chats, the number one reason for churn. And in fact, the industry estimates that churn-induced toxicity costs over $700 million a year. The solution to this is known, active, positive moderation. But pure human moderation does not scale. If it takes one second to review an image, it takes one minute 
to review a minute long video and it takes an hour to review an hour long voice conversation, right? And let's face it, reviewing toxic content is a terrible job. No one wants to listen to verbal abuse all day long, every day. It is a job for AI. For this problem though, traditional speech to text solutions do not work well because first, challenging environments lead to poor transcription. The audio quality is not great and there are many languages, accents and context. On top of that, transcription alone is often ambiguous, right? Was that a harmless or an offensive F word? And importantly, transcription is still too expensive to deploy at scale. We take a different approach. Toxic situations are more often revealed by the, the acoustic context than by words alone. Think of detecting screams, laughter, emotional outbursts, or simply the gender and age of the people involved. We have built AI technology to model broadly human sounds in real time. Compared to speech to text, it is a hundred times faster and thus cheaper, and it's language independent. If you think of it, screams and laughter sound the same in every language, just like high emotions or the voice of a child. Let's look at the process. In real time or after the fact, AI does all the heavy lifting. We extract insights and key moments directly from the audio. We analyze patterns and interactions between speakers and highlight vulnerable categories such as women and children to give every conversation a risk score. And only after that do we bring in human moderators to review the cases, effectively cutting human work down by 90%. We make content moderators better at their job while also making their work faster and less tedious. Sounds too good to be true? Let's see it in action. This is a real Fortnite gaming session that was uploaded to YouTube. How do you pronounce your name? So the whole word is silent? I actually hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen so many silent letters in a name before, dude. What's your name, bro? Oh, yeah, it's D-A-W-K, but the D-A-W-K song. So it's just... I hate you! Oh, Get on that! It's on my Fuck off! What these three gamers say doesn't really matter. It's actually quite hard to understand, right? Let alone transcribe. All we need to know here is that two adults are picking on a young child. They are laughing, the child gets angry, and the internet has seen enough of this. We've built Safe Vox to help, and it's a game changer. We're deploying the system right now across the live comms infrastructure of a major gaming company to help protect millions of gamers. It started with a simple demo. You can do the same. Head over to auto.ai slash savebox to know more. Thanks, Nico. A question for you from one of our registrants. Can you more specifically compare and contrast your solution with semantic based solutions that exist in the current market? What are the advantages, disadvantages? Do you consider them complementary or a replacement? Thanks. That's a, that's a very good question. So there are very few solutions on the market that deal with uh, toxicity in voice chats. And as far as I know, all of these um, use speech to text first to transcribe the audio into text tokens and then model what is being said. We view content moderation primarily as an acoustic problem. We model the acoustic context of a conversation before modeling its content. And in many cases, it's going to be much faster and much cheaper to actually understand what is going on um, without transcribing. In addition, if needed, we can always do targeted transcription on the fraction of the audio that is still ambiguous after doing the acoustic model. So what we do is what we see as the, the best of both worlds. And on top of this, it brings in insights that are impossible to get with transcription. Think of laughter, high emotions, screaming, etc. All of this, uh, which is absent from speech to text output.
Thanks so much, Nico, for the presentation. Up next, I'd like to in introduce the Piffle Team, a Bay Area-based voice gaming platform that aims to nurture professional wellness through conversational gameplay. Hybrid work cultures are here, and the line between work, life, and home has blurred. It's the perfect time to introduce voice technology beyond the home and into the workplace, and we're doing just that. Hello, we are Piffle. We're bringing gamified wellness to work through multimodal experiences. Pause for a second and answer this. How does work feel to you? Like a lot of people, I experienced deep grief and loss during this pandemic. And as I tried to get creative in coping with loss, I took up a side, side job as a barista in the hopes of picking up latte art. When I stumbled upon something interesting, the team of baristas I was working with was thriving in the middle of this pandemic. Work felt different on this team. And so I got curious and I decided to study this team culture over the next few weeks. And here's what I've learned. This team had quality conversations. People felt safe expressing themselves at work. They were engaged at work, and most importantly, they played games together, which helped us form social bonds that made collaboration so much more smoother and enjoyable. Today, 91% of us who are working from home are reporting high levels of stress. 63% of the workforce is saying that our companies can do more to support our mental health. This is costing us up to $550 billion of loss a year which is 34% of every disengaged employee's annual salary. Our workplaces are going through a wellness crisis and it's hitting our people and our businesses. And the current solutions that we have are missing something critical. Doing more yoga doesn't lead to work-life balance. Having fancy offices with great cuisines is something that you grow numb to over time. And therapy helps you manage the constant cortisol drip that your work cultures are creating. These are great add-ons to have, but they're band-aid solutions when it comes to solving wellness in the workplace. Turns out people stay in workplaces where they enjoy working with the people that they're around and the feeling that they have of going into work. Companies like Google and Gallup reinforce this through their research. Healthy work cultures include trusting teams, engaged employees, and quality social connection a lot like what that team of baristas was doing. And when you don't have these ingredients, you experience high depression and anxiety, which makes you feel like you're losing agency over your work environment, which in turn leads to lost productivity. So how do we solve this? Well, research from the Institute for the Future shows that as little as 30 minutes a day of online gameplay was enough to create dramatic boosts in mood and long-term increases in happiness. Gaming is an incredibly powerful tool when it comes to building social connections and improving mental health. And so that's what we're doing with Pipple. We're bringing social gaming into your workday. We're creating games that will help you start your meetings with check-ins and wellness practices where you can take walks during your work breaks and send personalized shout outs to your teams to celebrate wins and so much more. We're creating experiences that are going to give your employees the agency to shape their work cultures at a time when they need it the most. We're a holistic wellness solution when it comes to the workplace. We're creating engaging experiences at the team level, which is what sets us apart from our competitors. We're targeting a global corporate wellness market of 58.2 billion US dollars, which is expected to grow to 93.4 billion by 2028. We're starting with over a thousand wellness driven corporations and expanding to over 55 million global workplaces. We are a team of voice first creatives or writers from Headspace and Disney, developers who've built over a hundred voice apps, musicians who performed in the late show with Stephen Covey, and there's more. We've got experts advising us across verticals from voice, gaming, wellness, behavioral science, but mostly, we're just a group of people who really want to help you bring your whole self to work by creating meaningful connections with yourself, your environments, and your teams. Teams on Earth can join our private beta by going to piffle.me. And for teams that are headed into space, we'd love to support your journey through wellness. Dear Moon Project, if you're listening, please contact us through hello at piffle.me. And we'd love to support the first civilian mission 
headed to the moon by boosting team wellness. Thank you. Great job on the presentation. And a question from our audience. They would like to know why voice is an important modality to start with versus any other modality for you all. And how these wellness games will be available and benefit from in-person versus virtual teams. Great question. Our hope with Piffle is actually to embed wellness and to have the workday is naturally structured. And so if you think about the start of meetings, that's a very conversational environment naturally. And by using voice to bring our gaming content to these teams, we're creating room for people to enjoy eye contact, to laugh together, to really soak in each other's social presence, which will help build social connection. Whereas if you notice, um, a lot of times when you play games on, in groups, on screens, you lose people's attention. Anytime there's a moment, it takes some time to regroup and to really make sure everyone's present. Um, and so with Piffle, it's really, we're targeting social connection and we feel like going multimodal and using voice in certain settings um, is really effective. In terms of having our content um, available for in-person and virtual, we are betting on work cultures being hybrid. So we're building our games to be friendly for both on-site as well as online um, contacts. Thank you to Eamon from Piffle. And with that, we've reached halfway point for today's program. And before we dive into the rest of Demo Day, I'd like to take a look back at the journey our founders have been through over the last 10 weeks. Hey Google. How can I help? Show me a recap of the Google for Startups Accelerator Voice AI cohort. Sure, let's get started. Welcome everyone, Google for Startups Accelerator Voice AI, first day. We are Needle, as in the haystack. Our startup is democratizing access to information and the microphone itself. We're looking to use the voice to transform burnout in the healthcare space. Our startup is you know, Tiny Chef. We aim to help the consumers in the kitchen for their entire journey. We're Simbi. Our startup is a reading platform, and we aim to make books more engaging to motivate people to read more books more often. Our startup is AutoAI, and we aim to enable emotional intelligence everywhere. Our startup, Voiceify, is really a platform for brands to quickly stand up conversational experiences. Our startup, Bespoken, uh, we aim to make it super easy to build great voice experiences via testing, training, and monitoring. We are Powwow AI, and we aim to change the world of meetings in operations and technology in enterprises. Our startup is basically trying to bring wellness to the workplace through conversational gaming. Our startup, we focus on building a meeting OS, and what we do is we allow the user to plan, host, transcribe, search, and share meetings. Our startup is Conversation Health, and we really focus on being able to deliver conversational AI in healthcare specifically. Our startup is Bubbly you said, and we aim to build the largest data platform for baby development. The program starts by working on OKRs with your mentors, your co-pilots in this program, your startup success managers and technical anchors, um, and their whole goal and mission is to help you accomplish your OKRs, connect you to the right resources, the right people, the right teams to do so. Week two, we dive into product design and UX. Today, I want to talk to you about conversation design and what is it and why I feel it's so important if you're going to be working on products like Google Assistant. Your users are going to throw you curveballs. Like that's just how it works. Uh, so you have to figure out how to respond to those things. Followed by Tech Week and ML. You gotta have some showcase where people can see your technology in action. Although you should be flexible to say that may not end up being the, the ultimate use. And then next stop, Growth Week. We are more than halfway through the program and it's been surreal to say the least. I've been able to learn firsthand from people that I've been looking up to in the industry over the last few years. We'll conclude with people in leadership and then we'll celebrate with Demo Day and graduation. Huge congratulations to all 12 companies. This program has been an honor working with all of you and I'm so proud of the work that you've accomplished over the last 10 weeks. Congratulations. Congratulations, startups. I'm taking the next step 
in your entrepreneurial journey. Really appreciate all the effort that each and every one of you has committed in participating in the Google Voice AI Accelerator Program. Really excited to see all the great things you're going to build. Congratulations. Welcome back. And I hope you all have enjoyed the recap video. And congratulations again to our founders. Up next, we'll hear from Gil from powwow.ai. Powwow is a SaaS platform which unleashes the power of AI in business meetings using proprietary AI algorithms to transcribe and analyze meetings, transforming them to actionable insights. Hi, my name's Gil McLeff, the co-founder and CEO of Powwow AI, and I'm here to take you on a short journey to show you what we at Powwow AI find so exciting in the future of meeting technology for enterprise customers. Our personal background includes many years in operations and technology teams at large enterprises with our fair share of bad meeting stories. And I'm sure everyone listening today has a story to tell from their experience. I can share one about a team member that spent eight hours on a call and she felt she was forgotten right after the introduction and looking back with no follow on actions, the entire meeting been a complete waste of time. Astoundingly over 70% of managers in a HBR study feel their time at meetings is unproductive. Furthermore, the top survey result for what people would rather do than attend a bad meeting was go to the dentist. So how do we overcome these issues with Powell? We believe in collaborative intelligence. One of our core values is enhancing human capabilities, not replacing them. We're part of a wave of practical AI applications that is allowing subject matter experts to reimagine enterprise business processes. Think of Powell today as high quality transcription, smart summaries, and important follow-on actions, all housed in a meeting cloud where team members present or not at that meeting can participate in follow-up actions and discussions. It also provides clear insights on sentiment and engagement. Think of Powell in the future as not only doing this for one meeting, but also across the landscape of meetings, intelligently inferring synergies, providing insights, and suggesting follow-up actions based on meeting content. How does Palo do it? It's about using AI to understand the way people communicate. The language that people use in operations and technology groups includes words like PPM or DMIAC or RACI. I'm sure many of you have never heard of these terms, parts per million or paper mache. Palo is trained on operations and technology meetings and is the only company in the world that's developing proprietary AI models to identify their most important takeaway. It also takes specialized commands like, hey, Powwow, capture key points. Powwow integrates with task management, project management, and agile development so that information can easily flow between Powwow and those tools in a streamlined user experience. In the past 18 months, we've gone from a Raspberry Pi that Artem and I tested in a small office in Manhattan to an enterprise SaaS system with over 150,000 proprietary lines of code with 27 full-time amazing team members. We're well on our way to achieve our goal of $100,000 in revenue in our first year and already have three signed contracts with system integrators, which are pitching Powell to their customers in a flywheel effect. We're excited about the recent release of Powell for Microsoft Teams and the Microsoft Store with 145 million daily users. The Palo Google and Zoom connectors, all of which are creating sizable user interest, which in the next 12 to 18 months will materialize into significant monthly average users and revenue. Satya Nadella, the Microsoft CEO, said last year that COVID-19 has accelerated digital transformation. It's caused the number of online meetings to increase dramatically across all conference platforms. Pow Wow is strategically positioned to work with any conference platform. This enables most companies that use multiple conference platforms to have 360 degree visibility across the entire meeting landscape. It's why our serviceable, obtainable market is $4.6 billion based on 20 million users at $20 per month, 
regardless of the number of meetings. Think of Pow Wow as the Switzerland of AI platforms for conference meetings. Our marketing and sales are trending strongly positive due to our close partnership with Google and Microsoft, who are helping position Pow Wow within the larger ecosystem. Our Microsoft Teams app in the Microsoft Store and alliance and referral agreements with small, medium, and large system integrators that initially become Pow Wow customers and then bring Pow Wow to their long established customer relationship has a powerful flywheel effect. We are three leaders that all went to Columbia University and have a saying between us let's get this up to 116th Street standard. We're having fun building something awesome to support corporate environments that we lived in for over 40 years combined. We've known each other for years, share a work ethic, and trust each other in a way that's rare and profound. We're excited about the future and between us want to make the right decisions related to AI and its impact on humanity. We're looking for $2 million to support sales partnerships and additional development for the next 12 to 18 months to reach Series A with revenues of at least 140,000 monthly recurring revenue. Thank you for listening today. And for more information about Powwow AI, go to www.powwow.ai. Awesome job, Gil. One question from our audience. How do you plan to compete with larger platform providers as they may provide similar capabilities free of charge as part of their platforms in the future? We're not competing with the large platform providers. Our strategy is to integrate with them. That's why we're cross-platform and work with all the large providers. We offer a capability that provides an end-to-end -end meeting analysis result for a niche market. Think of meeting at a glance for operations and technology meetings. We're working very closely with large providers and they have looked to elevate the relationship going forward rather than compete. Awesome job, Gil. Up next, we'll be hearing from Aaron, the founder of Symbi, a Vancouver-based startup that combines learners' narrations with the text of a story to create an engaging audio-visual book that learners can, around the world, read along to. Hi, everyone. My name is Aaron Friedland. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Symbi. We're a social reading platform that motivates students to narrate books, enabling a global community to read and listen to those narrations. The most effective way to read, which doubles student reading fluency in as little as three months. We generated over 100,000 in Q1, and we're here to close our $2 million round with investors like Snowflake's co-founder already investing. Our approach was developed from lived experience. When I was young, teachers noticed I couldn't read, and I was diagnosed with dyslexia. I was prescribed reading while listening. Imagine reading a book and listening to that same audiobook. And this method worked so well that despite early teachers suggesting I wouldn't make it to college, I'm now a PhD candidate in econometrics, looking at the impact of reading while listening. And this is why we developed Symbi, because we know it works and need it now more than ever, as for the first time in human history, higher income countries like the US are seeing declining rates of literacy with over 40% of fourth graders not reading at grade level. So we created a solution that motivates students to narrate books, understanding that when they do, Symbi captures their voice and text and brings them together, adding them to a global library so that their friends, classmates, and even kids around the world who are learning to read can read along with them. This bimodal approach of reading while listening is the most effective way to read. And students love reading on Symbi. Leaderboards motivate classes and schools to read. Students get weekly impact reports showing how many people around the world are reading and listening with their voice. And they also love downloading and sharing their volunteer certificates, which objectively track time spent reading. Students see a 2x improvement in reading in as little as three months, and classrooms using Symbi report seeing students reading 50% more than classrooms that don't. As students read on Symbi, Symbi listens and provides data and insights back to teachers. This automates fluency benchmarking, a process that is usually manual, where teachers must listen to the student read in person and assess their fluency. This solution saves teachers an average of 45 hours a year and saves schools over $8,000 a year. Educators also love our digital library, learning management system, and built-in communication. And as we validated our land and expand, we've switched to selling directly to school districts. This has supported us in growing revenue over 30% quarter over quarter with a record Q1 this year. The last six school districts who signed up moved from Raz Kids, our main competitor, to Symbi. 
Simbi provides the same data as RASKIDS, but motivates students and removes the artificial test conditions. And this has supported our user base also more than doubling in the last six months from 58,000 to over 131,000 users. And with more districts, we're able to reach more parents through Simbi Reading Coach, our one-on-one -on -one reading coach offering. Many of our districts have over 70,000 parents associated with them. So we have a massive funnel. After teachers use Simbi, they start adding parent emails to Simbi so that parents can get data on their kids' reading. Through their child's weekly progress report, parents are able to see what they're reading, can listen, and book a personalized Simbi coach to support their child. Since launching Simbi Coach, it's grown rapidly with zero churn, and this is going to be our next major revenue stream. Between our district and parent focus, we're tackling a $38 billion market opportunity in North America. I'm fortunate to work with an outstanding team of 25. Alex, my co-founder, has worked with Facebook, Instagram, and the Prime Minister of Canada on global educational movements. Daniel, our CRO, has brought multiple organizations from zero to over a million in ARR, and has been selling into school districts for over 25 years. Adrian, our chief learning officer, is a celebrity educator whose books have sold over 400,000 copies, reaching 10 million learners annually. What Adrian suggests, educators follow. Pavel, our CTO, has led development teams across multiple organizations and is one of the most talented developers and leaders I've met. So what I'd love for you all to remember from this demo, Simbi is the only tech that motivates students to read for social good. Teachers save a ton of time, which saves schools over $8,000 a year. Simbi Coach is our next major revenue stream. We had a record Q1 and are tackling a $38 billion market opportunity. And in the interest of, and in the interest of time, I'll share one exciting partnership. It turns out that the same system that motivates students to read works just as well in corporations, providing employees with volunteering and engagement opportunities. Last month, Simbi powered Salesforce Global Volunteer Month, where 55,000 employees narrated books on Simbi. And we've done these virtual corporate readathons with many Fortune 500 companies, which further support Simbi Coach sales. Thank you, everyone. Here's to reading more books more often. Thank you, Aaron. Question from the audience for you. As you begin to scale across regions and across languages for your users, what steps are you taking to ensure that you incorporate the unique experiences and needs of users by region, language, and individual educational needs? Thanks for the question, Jason. Really appreciate it. What's unique about Simbi is we follow a user-generated content approach, similar to Duolingo, for example. And this means that our users help us to create content. And so every single book on Simbi is uploaded as what we consider a discrete unit or a discrete variable. And that means that every single book can be narrated by every single individual learner. And so we take into account where a learner is from, what their accent type is. And so we've got a massive library of content. And let's say a student in India is looking to read along to a book. Well, Simbi will automatically populate other Indian uh, accents and narrations for that user to read along with, which is the most, most effective way when you're reading and listening in an accent that you're familiar with. In addition to that, we're able to upload a lot of really great content in many different languages. Simbi is already supporting eight languages and is scaling at approximately two languages per week. And so we're able to have many of our users adding and narrating content in, in many more languages. And with our partnerships with Salesforce, for example, we've got very large corporations that are helping us to translate and narrate content into many languages to help support learners in those, in, in those kind of unique contexts. Um, in terms of the individual level, what's really important to understand is that reading is losing. Books are losing to fast-paced media. And Simbi has been developed to ensure that it that it's even exciting and engaging for students with dyslexia or students with ADHD. And so when you develop a reading platform that is so exciting and so engaging that it targets these users, it targets everyone and all users. And so what we see is that our pedagogical approach, which turns learning readers into reading leaders, where they start by reading and listening more often, and then over time, they progress to be narrators who are able to add content back into the library. And then when we add additional gamif gamification into that, we see a highly, highly engaging platform that helps to support individual learners, regardless of their geographic orientation. 
Amazing work to Aaron and team, and thank you. Uh, next up, we have Sean from Talkatu, a Halifax-based startup with dictation software designed specifically for veterinary and medical professionals, enabling them to save time in their practice. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sean Wilkie. I'm the CEO of Talkatu, and I'm here to talk to you today about how we're revolutionizing human-machine interaction. Burnout is a massive problem. 40% of physicians' time is spent on administrative tasks, and the scary part about this stat is it's a pre-COVID stat. In North America alone, 1.2 million medical professionals spend over a billion hours a year on administrative tasks. Typing is retro, and a QWERTY keyboard was initially engineered to be inefficient. We didn't want those little arms to jam when we were typing, so we slowed the typers down. Voice is the future of human-machine interaction and is much faster. What is Talkatu? Talkatu is this little application under this lady's arm. It's an overlay for the Windows and Apple operating system, which allows our users to speak into any field where they normally would have typed. Everybody types. Vets type all day, every day, filling out endless reports. And for some reason, some people like to do their medical reports after hours. Ideally, they'd love to do them after every exam. But most of the time, reports end up like this. Then there's this guy. Also, vets like to abbreviate. A lot. But what if you didn't have to type? Enter Talkatu. Dictation made simple for veterinarians. Talk, don't type. Like this. Rosie jumped out of a truck yesterday and her owner noticed that she was limping, period. Whoa, that's cool. But can it do this? Laparoscopic cholecystoduodenostomy was performed under general anesthesia, pre-medicated with metatomidine, comma, induced by propofol and reversed by adipamazole, period. That's impressive. And don't worry, it works with all your practice management software. Works on your PC and your Mac. Because of this, thousands of vets are adopting Talkatu. With Talkatu, vets are cutting their documentation time in half and are finally making it home on time. Why wouldn't you? Start your free trial today. Why we're different? Talkatu is easy. Simple, one-button design, no training required. Talkatu is efficient, allowing our users to spend more time doing what they love. And Talkatu works everywhere, in any field. Talkatu is revolutionizing dictation, and we're doing it through a dynamic speech context, which allows us to listen to what's being dictated and serve up a subset of words to the dictation in real time. So whether you're talking about cardiology or radiology, we're going to know that and provide more refined speech context as you're dictating in real time. And also, Talkatu is a cross-platform, integration-free dictation solution. Our go-to-market is simple. Seed, nurture, grow, or land and expand. What our, what our approach when it comes to go-to-market is, is to generate interest, nurture those users, and then grow to the entire organization. The founding team of this company is an incredible group of individuals. Ali and me have been working on three companies together now. This is our third. We've had a couple of exits already. Brendan's the smartest young guy I've ever worked with in my entire life and has been with me for the entire journey. And Brian's a friend of mine that I worked with when I grew a company back in 2007 along with Google while he was actually on the Google team. Our early traction is pretty impressive. Just today, we hit 35,000 US in monthly reoccurring revenue, and we have over 1,000 users using our software. I love Dr. Hilden's story. She says, I'm a better doctor when she spends time away from the office, and Talkatu enables her or helps her to do that. And this is a pretty common thing that we hear across our user base. They spend less time in the office and more time rejuvenating away from the office. Thanks so much for listening. I'd love to follow up with any of you. Please see my contact information below and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Takatu. And my question for you is, how do you see yourselves pivoting from veterinary care to human health care? It's a fantastic question. 
I think right now we're experiencing rapid, unprecedented growth for our company. So we need to be laser focused on our beachhead market. We're thinking about it and we're going to methodically plan out our healthcare launch so that when we do do it, we make a massive splash in the market. Thanks to Sean and team. And now I'd love to introduce Taisha, a New York and Kitchener Waterloo based team building a voice first culinary AI platform that helps consumers in their kitchen from the dinner dilemma to grocery planning, to grocery shopping, and to cooking their meals with interactive experiences on smart speakers. Hi, I'm Bahu Shete, founder and CEO of Tiny Chef, a smart kitchen assistant built for every kitchen. Kitchen journeys are very inefficient. Dinner dilemma, it's a million dollar question in every kitchen. Grocery shopping is inefficient even after online shopping and cooking takes a lot of time. On top of it, nearly 39% of the food bought by the average American family is wasted. What if you are able to plan your meals based on what you have in your fridge or plan your grocery shopping based on your meal plan and cook these recipes with hands-free interactive cooking experience? This could save nearly staggering 50% of the time, which is getting wasted today. And every meal can come out deliciously. That's what we have done in Tiny Chef. We have built a complete solution with two core components. One is a culinary AI solution, which converts any format of the recipe into a conversational format. And second is a very robust recommendation engine, which considers multiple parameters to recommend the right recipe for the consumers at the right time. We've had great success so far, starting our launch in, on voice platforms only in July 2019. We have launched on Google and Android platforms as well. And we are now expanding into North American market. We will soon be launching on Apple platform as well. We have great set of content partners. We have more than 1.2 million active users on the voice platforms and more than 100,000 users on the app. Very happy customers. And more than 40 food influencers have already partnered with us. Hey Google, talk to Tiny Chef. Here comes spring making its own statement. Let's cheer up. Happy spring. What would you like to prepare today? I want to empty my fridge. Do you have some leftover ingredients in your fridge? Let's use them up. What ingredients do you see there? Strawberries and bananas. Here are some recipes I've found for you. Which one would you like to pick? The first one. Strawberry banana smoothie provided by Good Eggs. We have two options. We can read the ingredients together or start cooking straight away. Start cooking. The two major revenue models we are talking about. One is a B2B content marketing using recipe as a content, which offers a complete interactive content marketing on the voice platforms, which has shown in our pilot nearly six times more conversion than the traditional digital marketing. And second is interactive cooking classes coming from very authentic chefs, on demand, low cost and interactive. The timing is great for us. Voice marketing is going to shoot up beyond $45 billion by 2022. And cooking is all time high in the new norm. All this cannot happen without a great ecosystem of partners on the content, technology, marketing, meal kits, retailers, everywhere we have tied up with the top of the class brands in order to do our pilots in India, Canada, and America. I have been a serial entrepreneur. This is my third startup. My second startup was acquired by a division of Motorola and Sanjeev Kapoor has done multiple startups. And Asha is my co-founder who has been the originator of this solution. 
We have great set of advisors in every field and a fantastic team who are very passionate about what we are building. We have raised so far $2.4 million. We are now planning to raise $5 million with very laser sharp focus, focus on the metrics required for Series A. 100K MRR, 2.5 million users, 250K MAU. Let's make cooking fun and inspiring again. Great job by Bali and team. A question from the audience. What are the biggest differences between the approach you took when launching in India and the one you'll take for your US launch? Thank you, Jason. That's a great question because we have worked hard last four months figuring out the right go-to-market strategy and identify the differences between India and North America. Few things which we have worked on. One is the content. Uh, we have brought in the right content which is required for the North American audience. Second is the culture. The cooking culture is different here. So we took our help from chefs in North America. And third is the voice design because the personality is going to be different for the North American users. So we work with a UX agency to help us on the voice UI interfaces. And fourth is the user acquisition strategy. And there also we have worked on A, we will extend what has already worked in India, but we have also added few more strategies. What worked for us in India was type with celebrity chefs and influencers and partnership with Amazon. We are extending that in North America as well. On top of it, we are also tying up with uh, CPG brands, grocery retailers who will help us to drive traffic to uh, get the users in North America. Thank you to the Tiny Chef team. And up next, we'll hear from Voiceify. Voiceify is a Boston-based startup with a SaaS platform allowing brands and large enterprises to easily design, build, and deploy voice apps, chatbots, and other conversational experiences across voice assistants and social media platforms. We are Voiceify, and our SaaS-based conversational experience platform allows any brand to be able to connect with their customers through conversational interfaces like Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa, along with custom assistants, chatbots, and IVR telephony systems. With 90 million smart speakers in the U.S. alone, the voice market is simply too large of an opportunity for brands to ignore. The growth is even more impressive when you consider that the smart speaker penetration in 2015 was nearly zero. This same double-digit growth is happening in the UK, EU, and developed countries around the world. Like web, mobile, and social, brands are looking to their marketing departments to determine how to utilize this new digital channel. However, it's been challenging because there are too many voice assistants, too many devices, and no good tools available until Voiceify. The concept of digital experience management is not new. In the late 90s, brands were starting to see the massive opportunity with the World Wide Web. Marketers at large brands initially had similar challenges building and maintaining corporate websites. Then the first web experience management platform came along and changed all of that. Web experience management is currently dominated by companies like Adobe, Sitecore, EpiServer, WordPress, and Drupal. All of these companies have billion dollar valuations. Voiceify is taking a similar approach and is the only enterprise focused voice experience management platform in the market. We are empowering marketing departments in several ways. First, the Voiceify solution is a no-code platform designed to make it easy for non-technical marketing personnel to create, deploy, and manage engaging conversational experiences. The UI looks and feels like the web-based forms marketers are already comfortable using to manage their website properties. Second, Voiceify believes that brands should be able to connect with their customers on any voice-enabled platform or device. That's why we developed our proprietary data normalization capability, which allows brands to build a single conversational experience and then deploy it to any number of conversational endpoints. Finally, we believe brands should be able to have dynamic and engaging conversations with their customers at every step of the customer lifecycle. That's why we have partnered with or integrated with software companies that are already part of the marketing technology stack at major brands. 
This allows brands to do things like extend voice commerce or post-purchase customer support, like package tracking and returns, by simply adding their credentials for their e-commerce and customer support software they already own. Voiceify's approach has resonated with the market. Since launching the commercial version of our software in late 2019, Voiceify has secured over 35 national and global brands across every major vertical. And we have a very healthy pipeline of companies that are in active negotiations to come onto the platform. With clients like Unilever, Johnson & Johnson, and Volkswagen, we have established ourselves as a clear solution for conversational management at the enterprise level. In addition, we have over 75 signed partnerships with ad agencies and technology partners. The investment we made in developing this channel over the last year has paid off in the form of increased top of the funnel activity and increased revenue velocity. Voice of I sells 12 month subscriptions with an average monthly subscription fee of approximately $2,000 per app on our platform. Brands are able to pay upfront or on a monthly basis. We also charge an additional usage fee when user interactions exceed the allotted amount in our base package. Voiceify launched the platform in late 2019, and despite the start of a global pandemic, we finished 2020 with $500,000 in ARR. Based on our new business wins in 2021 and our current pipeline, we believe we'll finish the year with revenue over $1 million in ARR, representing revenue growth in excess of 100%. And we will likely finish 2021 with a run rate ARR of over $2 million. The global conversational AI market size is expected to grow from 4.8 billion to 13.9 billion by 2025. We believe conversational experience management will be a significant portion of that total number. Using both top-down and bottom-up analysis, we believe the total addressable market for Voiceify solution is several billion dollars within the next several years. Prior to starting Voiceify, the three co-founders started a digital agency. Over the course of 15 years, we grew it into a national footprint serving brands around the country and the world. We then successfully exited through a private equity sponsor and eventual nine-figure sale to a publicly traded company. Due to our 15-year track record working with major brands, we have an intimate understanding of the needs of marketing departments when it comes to accessing new digital channels. Finally, Voice Advice founders have skin in the game, having invested the majority of the capital raised to date. We're now raising a seed round and looking for institutional investment partners that are excited to work with us as we scale up the business. If you're interested, please reach out using my email address. Awesome job, Jeff. Now a question from our viewers. As the voice assistant app stores remain nascent and continue to mature, can you talk about customer acquisition and how you're making your potential customers aware of your voice assistant application? Thanks, Jason. Uh, great question. Regarding customer acquisition, you know, we've been very fortunate to have been the beneficiary of a lot of great word of mouth uh, marketing. Our Existing customers uh, have built some phenomenal experiences on the Voiceify platform that have been highlighted in the media and got a lot of attention. So a lot of what we're doing now is sort of building off of that buzz. We've got the market en engine working, uh, driving uh, things like conferences and webinars. We've created a lot of great case studies from the uh, great work that's already been done on the platform. I think one of the major drivers of growth going forward is going to be our investment in these agency and technology partnerships. I had mentioned this before in the presentation, we have over 75 agency and technical partners, and essentially we've formed relationships with these organizations so that we can sell the Voiceify platform into their existing installed base. And we've already seen this uh, ramping up substantially in the last several months and expected to continue to go on uh, for the rest of 2021 and beyond. Thank you to the Voice of IT. And of course, last but not least, I'm thrilled to introduce Matt from Val. Val, out of New York, brings the best of productivity and communication platforms into a single integrated meeting tool. Hey, how's it going? I'm Matt. I'm one of the founders of Val. Um, so we started Val in 2018 with this thesis that the workplace is getting more distributed. Uh, obviously, it's gotten a lot more distributed since then. And what we noticed at the time is that some of the most exciting advances in productivity have come from these full stack collaborative tools that manage distributed work, right? So code has GitHub, designs have Figma, and meetings we thought were this interesting gap in the market, where on one hand, all the most interesting stuff in every company is happening in meetings. But on the other hand, people don't really like their meetings. Um, and our meeting tools today really just let you see and hear each other, and that's it. 
So we decided to build Babel as a full stack meeting OS that actually helps teams have better meetings. That means that they're collaborative, so they're more engaging in the moment. It means they're automatically captured so that, uh, via transcription and recording so that folks can focus more on the conversation versus writing down everything that was said. And there's an all-in-one full stack solution. So you don't have to bring multiple tools to a conversation. But we thought the best way to go through this would just be to show you. So let me quickly jump into a demo here. Cool, so this is what it would look like to join a meeting in Babel. So right now it's just me in here, but if folks were to join me, able to see and hear each other, we'd have screen share. But we have a bunch of other features that help make this a much more collaborative experience. So for one thing, we have this collaborative note panel over here where I create a little quick agenda for us. So we're gonna do an intro, we're gonna do a demo, we're gonna do a discussion. I could mark this intro as uh, address so that we all know that we're past that. I can leave a little note in here, like check the Wi-Fi. I can leave an action item, you know, maybe for Andy to do the thing. But what's interesting about this is just by virtue of having this here, everyone knows where they are in the conversation, what's coming next, um, what they haven't gotten to. Um, they can see what these action items, what's gonna happen after this meeting is over, right? So it's not just what's happening now, it's what's gonna happen as a, an effect of this. And then because everything is recorded, we're able to have these bookmarks and these timestamps so that you can use these notes uh, as chapter marks back into the conversation. This means that if someone's talking, instead of writing down everything that was said, I could just write interesting. I could write hashtag idea uh, and leave a little idea annotation so that everyone knows exactly uh, where that idea happened and they can go back and revisit that after the conversation's over. To that end, we have these emojis here that we created because you're sick of presenting to a room full of muted people, which is kind of the norm today. But you could also use these as bookmarks into the conversation to see when people are clapping or thumbs upping, which is really nice. Now we think it's really valuable to record your conversation, but if there was ever was a sensitive moment, you want to go off the record, very easy to go off the record, that's global and public, you can go on the record. It's very easy to see exactly what the status is of your conversation. And because we capture the raw audio from every single microphone, we're able to get a really high quality transcript of the conversation. So right now it's just me talking, but if you missed you know, the first few minutes of this meeting, you can go back and read that. Or if you came a little bit late, you can catch up on what I said later on. Now when a meeting's over, we give you a video with a timeline with the emojis and notes in that timeline so you can see what was going on and see the hot spots. You can see who was talking how much. So for better or worse, I was doing most of the talking in this conversation. And you can see who was talking when. So I could jump to you know, when John was presenting or you jump to when Rennie said something really interesting. Uh, and we, of course, you've got your notes where you can you know, see those notes, but you can also use them as bookmarks or chapter marks into the conversation and listen or play from there. If you've got your transcript, again, this is Matt and Paul, this is in person one, person two. And I could search through it for moments, but maybe when we were talking about browser support, find that moment, listen or play from there. Or if it's really interesting, maybe grab it with my uh, mouse and just say, I wanna share that with Andy and the whole product team. Now, when the meeting's over, I can go back to my dashboard uh, and scroll up and see my past meetings. Um, I could go ahead and see my upcoming meetings using Google Calendar. Um, and for any of these upcoming meetings, I could create an agenda in advance. Maybe for this meeting, I wanna create an agenda that's gonna have a focused agenda where we're gonna discuss you know, this thing and that thing, save that off. Uh, and one thing I could do because it's all captured in Val is just search. So I can search for the word design. It'll show me anything and everything at all about search, uh, about, sorry, about design. Maybe when John was talking, maybe when there was an idea that came up, um, I can scroll down you know, into March or into uh, uh, January of this year, and maybe even open up this moment when we were discussing design um, earlier on in the year. Cool. So that's just a quick demo of Vowel there. Let me jump back into this presentation for a moment. Um, so today, Vowel is 20 team members. Uh, we just raised our Series A, so we're not actively fundraising, and we're publicly launching later this quarter. Uh, we already have a, a beta up and running with thousands of users, and they're already giving us some really great feedback. Um, and what we're finding is that in 90% of Vowel meetings, people are using these collaborative Vowel features. That's notes and agendas, automatic recording and transcription, easily shareable video, real-time reactions, and search. We're also unlocking this new behavior. We're finding that in over 20% of meetings that are recorded on Vowel, people are going back and listening to them at least once, which is really cool to unlock that value for folks. And then last year, we really focused on building out this meeting OS. This year, we're focusing on building the apps that only we can build on top of our proprietary platform. So uh, to that end, we're building lots of integrations, including this one with uh, task managers, where action items that captured are captured in the meeting can show up in those task managers with a link back to the meeting for context. And uh, analytics for your team about how they behave in meetings, who speaks when, um, whether your meetings start on time or not, and then personal speech patterns. So at a high level, we believe that in five years, it'll be crazy to leave a meeting empty handed. It'll be unheard of to miss a meeting. And it'll be trivial to collaborate across the world. So that's us, we're Vowel. Thank you very much for listening. That's it. Thanks, Matt. And one final question from our viewers. Beyond extensibility and integration, how does Vowel's use of AI improve user and or company productivity? 
Cool. So that's a great question. Uh, there's two primary ways. Uh, number one is just by extracting information from the speech. So for example, you saw we have a transcription, which means that we can power search and other neat features so that moments that are that are captured in the meeting can actually be revisited and refound, which can be really powerful for folks instead of writing down every single thing that was said. Um, we're actually taking this a step further and starting to automatically highlight and extract these moments in the conversation. So pulling out the action items and follow-up items, or even showing the hotspots or the decision points in the conversation automatically. The other really important way that we're doing this is that um, AI allows us to make these meetings more inclusive and meritocratic, right? So it's easier for the note taker to participate, for example, instead of just being totally spending all of their uh, concentration on taking notes. It also means that people in different time zones can participate in conversations because they can quickly search and find these moments or have these moments alerted to them uh, that they might not otherwise be aware of so they can be part of this company culture. And then lastly, this is a really interesting one. Uh, people just knowing what was said means that it's easier for people to hold each other accountable, for them to you know, give credit where credit is due and for teams to be more meritocratic and have an even balance uh, in these conversations. So for us, we think AI really empowers all these things that allow folks to have much more inclusive and productive meetings. And that's a wrap. On behalf of Google and everyone who made this program possible, a tremendous thank you. Thank you to the 12 startups and the awesome teams behind them. It has been a true honor and privilege to work with you all. Thank you to the Googlers and partners who generously offered mentorship and support to our founders and for all of the work you do for this ecosystem. And lastly, thanks to all of you, our viewers, for tuning in to learn more about these great companies. And as always, we have one final call to action for our viewers. Investors and partners, our founders would always love to continue the conversation with you. Customers visit their websites, learn more about their awesome tech and the companies that they are building. And finally, to our voice enthusiasts out there, please spread the word on our demo day. Interested in connecting with our founders, just reach out anytime and email our team directly. And finally, congratulations and wishing you all a fantastic summer.